Over to you, sir. Thank you so much for all your kind words of introduction and a warm welcome to all of you. And thank you, Dr. Bansi and Dr. Ashwin, for this excellent academic session and the topics that they have selected. So today I'm going to talk about something which is of importance to everyone, so as to say. So just a raise of the hand, how many of you like ice creams? Fantastic. Okay, so um, I'll tell you why that is relevant in a very short time. Um, so my topic today is impact of ultra-processed uh, food on metabolic diseases. So before we go there, let's understand what ultra-processed food is. And this terminology comes from a classification, which is called the NOVA classification that developed at Sao Paulo in Brazil. And it divides the food into four different categories. So if you look at the categories that we are talking about today, first one is the one that you probably don't like as much, and that's the unprocessed or minimally processed food. So at me hearing Dr. Kavita, and we had seen that in India, wherever you, if you want to go north, south, east, or west, the carbohydrate rep representation on the plate is almost 60 to 70 percent, which is very different from our, our Western counterparts. And um, so fruits, vegetables, uh, these are the kind of things that we want plenty, quality protein for that matter. Um, so these fall under the category of unprocessed or minimally processed food. Plain yogurt for that matter, meat. Uh, then comes the processed ingredients. This can be iodized salt, sugar, starches, vinegar, and oil that is derived from, say, for example, nuts, uh, in particular, olive oil. And then comes the processed food, uh, which comes through baking, boiling, or canning, like canned fishes, cakes, cheese, pickles. And finally, our topic for today is the ultra-processed food, uh, which has got a typical feature. So they contain ingredients, few of which is rarely uh, something that you find in your kitchen. And they also tend to include many of the additives and ingredients that are not typically used in home cooking. For example, preservatives, emulsifiers, sweeteners, and artificial colors and flavors. And what happens is they have a longer shelf life. But does it extend your life in general, or is it bad for you, is what we are going to talk about. So these are the list of common ultra-processed food, like ice cream ham, sausages, crisps, mass-produced uh, bread, breakfast cereals, biscuits, carbonated drinks. So I think we are falling back on easier sources which are more palatable. And if you look at the younger generation as well, they are very much addicted to these kind of ultra-processed food. And it's very, very difficult to get, uh, make them come out of it. Some of the alcoholic beverages like whiskey, gin and rum also are considered as ultra-processed food. So why are ultra-processed foods bad for us? Because they have high levels of saturated fat, salt, sugar, and in general, if you consume them, they leave you with less room for more nutritious food in the diet. And also, they are known to cause negative health effects. Now let's look at the Indian scenario. So it's a very typical V-shaped curve. So in general, there's an upward trend in the consumption of the ultra-processed food, except for the time when we had COVID. And there you see a very typical dip because we were staying back home, we're consuming home-cooked meals, we're not going out and buying this food. So there was a very typical dip during the COVID times. But again, we see a very sharp rise post-COVID as well. for that. Um, so again, um, if you look at the Indian scenario and the forecast for the retail sales of the ultra-processed food, again, that is something that we should be concerned about and there's a very rapid growth uh, in the sales of this ultra-processed food. And the forecast is 
absolutely alarming. Impact of ultra-processed food. So there are many studies that they had looked into and at least seven out of these nine studies have showed that uh, these ultra-processed food are associated with high levels of LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol, triglyceride levels, uh, systolic blood pressure, waist circumference, fat mass index, BMI in children and adolescents. And we had been talking about that Indian phenotype is very different because we have a lot more fat around the waist and hence we have a higher uh, you know, insulin resistance and this needs to be addressed from the very beginning right from the childhood and adolescence. So again, uh, there was a meta-analysis that was done with the ultra-processed food and also which showed a definite adverse health outcome. And uh, the direct associations that were there uh, that came out was there was a high chance of mortality, cardiovascular diseases, related mortality, common mental disorder outcomes, increase in the body weight, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. And lesser known associations of we couldn't actually, you know, put our finger and say that there was a very profound effect where asthma, GI health, uh, some increase in the cancer risk, and also intermediate uh, cardiometabolic risks. And these probably requires or warrants further investigation. And this comes from the diabetes care. Again, another study that had been done uh, with the processed food, uh, and it clearly shows that there's an increased risk of metabolic syndrome in adults. Uh, the ELSA Brazil study, and you can see in here the study duration was about two years and included population between 35 years and 74 years. And finally, about 8,000 odd uh, participants completed the study. And if you look at the impact, of ultra-processed food on the waist circumference, there was a rise. If you look at the plasma glucose level, again, there was a rise. Uh, triglyceride levels, again, there was no definite uh, uh, conclusion with that. But HDL cholesterol, on the other hand, was lowered. And systolic and diastolic blood pressure was increased with the consumption of ultra-processed food. So as we had been talking about, Indian phenotype is more predisposed to metabolic syndrome. And if we are consuming more of this versus food, we are actually eventually driving them to metabolic syndrome. So greater consumption of ultra-processed food and beverages is independently associated with greater risk of developing metabolic syndrome uh, and during approximately eight year follow-up uh, study. And what should be the cut-up? It was shown that any consumption of ultra-processed food more than 552 grams per day compared to less than 234 grams per day, increase the chances of having a metabolic syndrome in future by almost 19%. Public health authorities from Brazil, Canada, and Uruguay also recommended that diminishing or avoiding the ultra-processed food, and in their place, consumption of unprocessed or minimally processed food is recommended. Uh, and we know that we can consume more of that, as we had shown you from the other studies as well, that there was an increase in the risk of diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and some form of cancer as well, and overall increase in mortality. Uh, and also, obviously, after processed food, as we had seen, is a definite uh, risk factor for obesity, hypertension, and dyslipidemia. So ultra-processed food consumption and increased risk of metabolic syndrome, again, a very robust systemic review and meta-analysis uh, was done, uh, which again had shown increased risk of metabolic syndrome with the consumption of ultra-processed food. And uh, obviously, the message here is we need to actively discourage the use of ultra-processed food, or the consumption has to be minimized uh, uh, should we want to prevent this individuals uh, ending up in metabolic syndrome. So the summary of my talk is, we talked about what ultra-processed food uh, are, and we said that they contain preservatives, which make them have a longer shelf life. However, they are actually going to shorten the individual's life. So in India, there was an upward trend, and it's still on the rise 
except for the times when there was COVID and people were staying at home and consuming home cooked meals. Multiple clinical evidences suggest that higher risk of adverse health outcomes associated with ultra food, ultra processed food exposure, uh, especially uh, you know, in terms of uh, increasing the chances of metabolic syndrome and associated disorders, and active discouragement of ultra processed food consumption in all ages, group, and gender uh, should be considered uh, to prevent metabolic syndrome and also related uh, comorbidities. With this, Thank you so much.